probably the racial player that pops up in most people's minds. Of course, I have a local that I know, Weebshi, shout out to him. Um, if he, he also plays racial, um, we got, um, oh, what's his name? Oh, so Needy. So Needy plays racial, but other than that, there's not really a lot. Oh, Bad Lime. Bad Lime recently picking up racial over the Tsubaki. I think actually Bad Lime is switching over to the racial like full time. And I actually yeah, really like my understanding. Hey, I heard the lobby join sound. That's a good sign. That is a really good sign. It looks like we're actually switching to a different stream match. It's not going to be between Master CJ or Tanarakun. It's actually going to be between Quetzalcoatl and a wall match. We're going to jump to that one instead. It seems like we're having a bit of problems concerning that first round one match, which hopefully gets resolved. If not, it's all right because we're going to be still getting Blaze Blue regardless. And of course, if you did, if you were looking for Hawkman, well, we got Susanna stepping up to play here. Eh, I feel like that's not quite the same thing. In a lot of ways, um, because like Susano is sort of the inverse of Hawkman, right? Where um Hawkman um is incentivized to play more passively because he just gains Magatama over time and then spend it all in one big go. So he's sort of the reverse of a snowball character. Um and snowball is exactly the word I like to use to describe Susano because he doesn't really get going until he gets going because he has to like hit you and unlock the seals that way Please yeah that's true character. that's one of the big things they're very about. much <clears throat> yeah they're very much um foils to each other which is really neat considering the lore behind how all that works and it sounds like we are finally going to get into some gameplay um we've got cats and wallbats throwing down in winners around one that makes some noise for blaze blue central fiction suzano and jubei facing off <laughs> I always enjoy seeing myself some Quetzal Goto. He made a killer run at TNS the previous weekend that TNS ran this game. It was a great time, and of course, Quetzal Goto is just showing that he's only getting stronger and stronger and more of a dominant presence here in this game. And right now, Quetzal Goto is showing exactly that in the first round with an explosive start, unlocking so many of his skills and actually Oh, wow. Here catch wall bats and jumping down in special goals so while not getting a perfect might as well just only be getting hit at once here wall bats spending the meter for the guard cancel for special goals of holding strong uh holding back yeah the resource lead is so huge the life lead was so huge there's just so little that wall bats can do in that situation when susan has all the unlocks all the meter he needs to just play his game and completely assert it all over you and it all started off of that air hit 6b and this counter hit 5B, I think we're going to be seeing sort of the same situation again. Um, the issue with that starter, though, is that, that some starters with Susano are a little bit finicky, right? Um, and so his first combo sometimes is not very long as he starts to accumulate unlocks. But as you can see, the combos are starting to get longer and this throw is going to hurt. Yeah, and just speaking of these combos, you want to really be making sure... Oh, we dropped that combo. You really want to be making sure... Uh, paying close attention to which skills he unlocks and how that changes his combo rooting. Usually, a lot of times, he wants to unlock that GT special first so that he can use it as a defensive option or even an offensive option in some situations. But he also wants to grab that Ground Viper and that Spin for maximum damage combos. And you see that Quetzal Goto has all three of those skills already unlocked and sitting down back in the corner with the Hunter Rear to his name. Wallbat really needs to play perfectly if he wants to get this round. Quetz right now playing as patient as ever, waiting for this combo to end. And actually, we're just going to go for the tech. Up Astral. Astral. Not going to end up Oh, no! Out. I don't think that parry that Wallbat got was quite what he wanted. That parry that Jubei has is on 6A, and a lot of the time, it'll unfortunately come out of a misinput. And you can see Wallbat's sacrificing Oki on the knockdown for fear of getting DP'd, and Ketz was able to escape and land the 6A to close out the game. Yes, he cannot let this character get started. Zen's DP is so, so hard to do. It's very big, really, really big. And it also just has so many invulnerability frames that trying to work around it can be very tough. But right now, Quetz is showing why he's so journey. strong on both offense and Level defense one. as we get straight into game number two. We'll see if anything changes on the side of Wallbat, but not if Quetz finds that jump in into the skill line. Yeah, a little bit rough um, getting the reset off the 6D, but not able to really convert it into anything meaningful. And he's got a couple of unlocks, but he's missing that very, very important DP. Like you said, that completely changes the way that Susano approaches defense. And while Bats can be a little bit more belligerent now on offense, can let a little bit more things rock. Nice dash through. Going for the tick throw, but Kets is ready with the tech. 
Yeah, but now he has that DP. And actually, Wallbats mm. popping that install super. That's trying to do something. I feel like if it wasn't DP, then I'm not sure what the plan exactly was. Because after that install, it basically forces Wallbat to see oh. the pace. And Quest is just not carrying. Hunter here to his game still. Has, still has overdrive and burst wall bats without really much resources. That single two day will hit, and that's going to be the round going to quest as he pushes himself onto set point. Yeah, that was a beautifully placed 5B to finish off the round. And unfortunately, wall bats without his burst. You have to be careful in a situation like this because it may not come back. You might just have to take this round the old fashioned way. Nice confirm off the counter hit. And now it looks like. Wallbats is finally going to get started. Ketz, though, is displaying his knowledge of the matchup by rolling forward on that fireball, OP. It doesn't help you escape the setup, but it'll make the spacing a lot better. What a trade! Quest, unlocking the spin, uh, unlocking the spin, and uh, it's going to be unlocking ground viper here, but not if we drop the final JV to unlock it. Instead, we're going to be driving that DP on the block, and we're going to be unlocking it right now. We don't have enough here to really extend this combo, but 3.7k into 4k is not really bad. Wall that's tucked into the corner. Yeah, the other doesn't actually have as well. We're driving defense that like that. As lame as possible, but we don't need to. The wall that's just stuck up against the wall, and Quest is just putting on such an overwhelming threat with all these overheads and wallbats successfully unsuccessfully not able to block them quest moving on 2-0 i mean if it ain't broke don't fix it that's the so thing right about. now chemical jade will be his opponent can chemical jade take a dawn down beat burger windmill 2-1 in round one but now it's a play against dawn in order to qualify into top eight no yeah you summed it up perfectly salt um Don, definitely the strongest representative for Aurelius in the West right now. The loss of Beautiful Dude was a great one. But Don has been leading the charge for all of the other Aurelius players. Um, still pushing the character to this day. Looting, learning new things to deal with me specifically, actually. Yeah, and one thing you got to keep in mind when it comes to Aurelius is that everything changes once he gets 50 mirror because that's when he unlocks that lockdown super that's going to be really, really tough to deal with when it comes to playing that defensive game because Don can basically create his own mix up once he has to lock down, but not yet though because Chemical Jade has Don stuck in this pressure instead, opening up with the classic rock Morganite coming in for that low. Morganite once again, and we're going for the hard block while getting the side swap and being a little bit unintentional as well as Don now has chemical jade in this optimal corner leader. Yeah, that burst worked out super well. Um, unfortunately, chemical jade rolling into the Valtus, that is not a knockdown you want to roll on ever because Valtus is a highly damaging starter and it will catch your roll every single time. But it's important, um, definitely to realize that, um, Don is not invincible and Nine can have some create your own mix up situations of our own too. But again, these rolls are just costing Chemical Jade so much HP. Watch the hard knockdown. You have to neutral tech. Oh no. Pressure just keeps on mounting. Chemical Jade holding on to that burst. Knowing this combo is not enough to kill. Maybe trying to save it for overdrive later on. I think we might be looking to use that resource very soon because Don just has Chemical Jade stuck in his blocking. Spend some meter. Goes for the God Fist as well. Pressuring Don from full screen. And now we're starting to find some hits so we can start to unlock some of those spells. You can only unlock those spells as 9 once you start hitting your, normal, your A normal, B normal, or C normal. And finally, we found a really good hit here. So tonight to extend the combo, but we drop it. We, we dropped the hard knockdown so Don was able to get out of that situation. Yeah, this is still a great situation for Chemical Jade. But unfortunately, Ignis has just now come back forced to burst. There's nothing you can do in that situation. That is checkmate. And Don is going to lock up the first game. Yeah, I think in particular that's just so even more scary when you're dealing with Relius in that kind of burst bait situation because that puppet can kind of work independently from him in some respects not quite a carl but still to some extent he that puppet can work independently from him so you basically block while that puppet is hitting you oh yeah you're right exactly right that's exactly what he does and it's not fun to deal with ever but you have to be careful as relius because everything is tied to a resource John D summoning and going for the air throw to catch the jump out. Good awareness from the doll meter, knowing that Chemical Jade is getting tired of blocking, looking for the escape option. 
Oh, and that fairy cat continues to catch Don in the air, but Don just does not care. Knowing that Chemical J cannot properly confirm off those hits, and good job on Chemical J playing this neutral game. Actually, picking some hits on those uh, on that doll because that's what we call that doll mirror means that Don can't use that doll in his specials, can't use that in his uh, combos. But I don't think he even has to care anymore. Popping the overdrive, popping the super, not going to be enough to kill. I don't think. No, actually, no. That no, that's good. double super. You're dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For a second, I was like, wait a minute. I don't yeah. think that single super is going to kill. Then I saw the second one come out. I'm like, okay. Okay, yeah, no, that definitely is. But interestingly enough, that's the only usage of that super that we've seen so far from Dawn was for that uh, round winning situation. No, yeah, um, that super from Rally is wrecked being him into reversal, but Dawn hasn't really needed to use um, his reversal super yet. Oh, the, that's just nasty. The first fate. Off the jump cancel TC. That is um a built-in burst fake that unfortunately Chemical J just got caught in. And that was same side, but it looks so ambiguous. If we do go for it, I think we are looking to do You're so. Dead. Because I think this will be plenty of fun. Drop at the very end. Chemical J still alive and once again. Spending that mirror to get out of that guard block situation, and we find the air to air with the JA. That's the way to kill the JA. That's the patience to wait for Don to go for the air approach. Oh, wow. That was definitely a dangerous situation. Yeah, that drop gave Chemical Jade the only chance um, that she will get in this round. Making the most of it so far, deploying the Avara by the ball. The Rellington drop stun. He checks on the doll, having fantastic oh, Chemical no. Jade, but Chemical Jade just keeps so on jumping, leaving him so vulnerable in the air. And without using those teleports to mix up their movement, Don can just send out that puppet, basically without any risk, and just go for that uh, easy snipe. Yeah, I think actually Chemical Jade was playing the matchup um, very well. I think the oh, movement, um, by and large, was fine. Just a little bit of a moment of weakness that Don was able to cash in on because Nine's movement is not that great. I'm really interested to see how Master CJ really just utilizes those nails because while nails are very strong, they are strong at a cost and they are limited in resources. So Master CJ does have to keep in mind that you can't always be throwing nails out and you gotta be throwing it out at key moments. You can see there we have 12 nails starting out each round and immediately Master CJ doing what I would say is the bang classic, immediately jump back. And what that kind of does is that you're playing the routine game, you're playing very safe, but also you can just toss out those nails and then start to control me. Yeah, that's exactly what Bang wants to do, is just try and control the monster as much as he can and pick his spots very carefully, because like you said, the nails do limit his neutral a little bit. That could have been a very dangerous conversion from fire. Unfortunately, not quite on top of it. That air hit 6B is 5K if he's able to convert it. Fire is only getting damage off the splash kick. This is absolutely absurd. Fire just really struggling to catch Master CJ. Hello. So Master CJ comes to him. Fireball out. There's the Wyvern to find the approach. And there is the 2C, what I like to call the hitbox. Fire sticking out, flipping Master CJ from the max distance. And Fire going to be taking that round. A very messy round, I would say. But um, Fire has just been going that is very consistent with the reaction when it comes to Master CJ's approach. And that flash gate is really what's going to be every action. Arguably the most strong when it comes to this character, because flash kick is just such a strong defensive tool, and the fact that Bang wants to be in the air so often. Yeah, speaking of reactions, um, unfortunately the defense is not there, getting clipped by the surfboard there, which is very good at catching fuzzy jumps. Able to get the burst, but it's not going to be enough. Fire closing out game one with a perfect. Absolutely no slouch on this character. Absolutely um, control. Yeah, I think Fire is a. I think Fire is a contender for best Kagura in the West right now. Best Kagura. The wheel of fate is turning. Mm. Oh, that's arguable. Yeah, I, I can see what you're saying though. Yeah, he's absolutely. He, like I don't think there's a um distinct top one best Kagura. No, not in at all. the West, but Fire is very, very much in that conversation. Especially because of how active he's been and how much he's been grinding the game, which is a huge factor. But unfortunately, Master CJ has also been grinding this game, and he is not going to go down without a fight. Having spent the burst, but it looks like he is cashing in on the momentum so far. Only one seal to his main though, and that is going to be a bit of a problem. 
absolutely. Four nails remaining as well. See, back up against the wall. Aang does not want to be trapped like a fly. Uh, which does not want to be trapped here. He wants to be a fly. He wants to be annoying. And right now, he cannot do that. Oh, he's stuck in this pressure. But great barriers. And you really want to be burying against Kagura because... Fire, because Kagura kind of just loses the barriers. Because a Fire, you better kill this man. Be oh, no. Okay, he locked it up. Fire, um... Slapping that one together a little bit hastily, but able to get the job done. He missed the punish on the Shura, by the way. It's only minus 15, I believe, and tried to punish with 6C with 22 frames? 24 frames. It's 24 frames, a little bit too slow for the punish, but able to lock up the round. No punish necessary. I just stay calm. Oh, nice catch from Fire. I love the use of that move as well, because that basically catches both sides of the map so they would want to land on in that situation. I'm afraid that's not true, Salt. That move does not have a hitbox on the other side, oh, despite it? what you might think from looking at it. No, it does not. It only hits in front. Well, you know what? It I looks it like it should hit behind. It does yeah, look it looks a bit like, like it should hit behind. Yeah, b -Fap is the one that hits on both sides. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh no, you're dead. Yeah. I need a meter here. That's the point damage off this command grab. That's 5k. Plus to make sure. 5.2k. Look at that. Fire. You know, was looking like he was about to lose that round for a moment. Just a single more hit from Master CJ would have ended him in that situation. But Fire able to close it out. And that's going to be the game. That's going to be the set 2-0. Moving up to play against Mac and Chess, a matchup that we have been talking about a lot before. It looks like that will be coming true. You come down to Texas Showdown this year or next year. All I'm saying. Maybe wow. if you come down to Texas um, Showdown, we'll go over to uh, Boston Blue Beat Beach episode. All right, but looks like uh, we are yeah. getting evening in. is, as they say, a blow up. Feel like oh okay that's what's going on we are watching dawn yeah. stream it, feels like, it seems like we cannot get into the room itself so there might be a bit of delay but hopefully there should be no problems sorry if there's no game audio but we do have some really cool colors because of course dawn has that uh color mod with the blade blue central fiction improvement mod right now Dawn will be running the Relius, as always, quest on the Susano. And actually, I think I've seen these two players play before. I believe Dawn usually has that edge in quest. It's always struggled to really deal with not only the character, but the player. So I'm interested to see how much, how far quest can take Dawn when it comes to running the distance with this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I think this matchup could go either way. Unfortunately, we're having a little bit of video quality issues, uh, but we are making it work. Um, no, it's a blow up. I'm not gonna lie, it's a blow up. I don't know what the Boston Blue Beat stream looks like, but I think it's a blow up. Oh, well, right now, Quetz is blowing up Dawn in this combo, and it just keeps on going. 3.7k, very nice. Plus of head health taken from Dawn, but that's going to be an EA coming out from Dawn on a defense, which will grant him a short moment of active flow. He has 100 meter on hand, base out the DP, and RC attempt from Quetz, who tried to continue pressure, and Dawn finds that counter hit into the cross up, and that is going to be the first round going to Dawn. Yeah, that active flow EA with the 4,000 damage definitely just set the whole thing off. I was just able to um, piece Kets apart from a distance and go in when it was safe from there. Man, this is a blow up. Um... Oh, and there's that sandwich pressure staple from puppet characters like Aurelius, and that's going to be the throw opening up Quetzalcoatl. There's that two-way stagger pressure coming in, playing a very simple quest, trying to get out. Got hit for a moment, but no hit confirmed from Dawn. And now we're back to neutral. We're playing at just Yeah, we're probably going to be seeing Duo Bios. There it is. Yep, there it is. Spending the 50 meter. Um, getting the late air dash mix up. Going to be another knockdown right back where Kets started. No seals, by the way. Um, so no DP available on defense, no meter for counter assault. It's looking pretty precarious. Don poised to take this game. Yeah, this pressure is just so suffocating. Quest unsure of how to get out of this pressure. And the moment we do get out, 
Plex just seems to really be struggling when, uh, when it comes to contending with Dawn in a neutral. We saw that OD attempt. I love that Dawn went for that DOS BIOS to keep Quetzal go to lockdown because even if Quetz tried to go for that EA, they would have gotten hit by that DOS BIOS regardless. So really well play from Dawn to kind of go in a bit of a checkmate situation. And if not a checkmate situation, just locking Quetz out of that resource that he just used. Very smart as now Dawn takes that first game. Yeah, definitely could still go either way, but it's going to be really important for Ketz that he gets the upper hand early on and gets things started as quickly as possible. You do not want to let Relius play because the longer you let Relius play, the more powerful he's going to get. Um, oh, no. It feels like, Quetz... like you said, once he gets that meter. Right now, it feels like Quest is kind of just like a deer in headlights when it comes to how Dawn is playing. There's the TRM. Quest goes up trying to read that throw tech, but it's not going to end up working out for him as Dawn throws him into yet another combo and just continues doing damage after damage, combo after combo. And when will it end? I don't know. Dawn is looking for the finish line. Wouldn't the later dash. So to speak. That's going to be it. Yeah. Three straight rounds unanswered now from Don. Kets with an overdrive and a dream. Gonna have to make something happen now. Yeah, we'll see if that ends up being the case. And you can see that Quetz is just also very unsure of how to play neutral against Relius, not knowing that Relius can just full screen check him just like that. But either with with either if it's just like the puppets heard the spike coming from the ground but it looks like Quetz finally found a really good hit probably one of the best hits he's found in this match so far I'm doing a lot of damage here yeah that was a huge opening um looking at a still image right now unfortunately oh we got hit with the oh, no. ad on Dawn's stream oh no we'll never know what happens afterwards we're gonna keep it a mystery you'll never know you know what, it, guys? Wrap I'm going to come up. in as a producer. Uh, streaming, y'all should be able to hear me. Streaming's will blow up tonight. This is fucking hard. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Hi, uh, Dave. Hanging in there. <laughs> hanging in there. Yeah. We're in it together. Yeah. CFs will blow up. <laughs> All right. There's been a lot of fire character swaps. I really think he just should stick Kagura most of the time. But he has shown that, you know, his Noel can work. I don't think this is the situation for that. So like you said, I'm really glad that we're seeing the Kagura starting things off. I have the Wheel of Fate turning. Rebel 1. This is Winter Side Top 8 of Blaze Blue Central Fiction on a line. Hopefully without any more hitches. Fire. Finding some small damage with the Fireball and immediately confirming into that Wyvern knowing that Mac and Chess was going for that save uh, B Fireball right there. Yep. And there's the Mac and Chess special SVP at every possible opportunity. 6B into Mordred, a very risky frame trap option from S. Not um not super safe on block, but he's able to make it work, stealing the life lead, building up the meter, and building up the momentum. We're gonna be seeing some press setups, hopefully. Okay, maybe trying to get out of Okay, and there's that first coming out from Mac and Chess. And because we got that insult as well, that's going to be making that special very safe. Lots of push blocks. The fire has to make his way back in. Going to make his way back in again because we spent that meter for that guard cancel. Oh, getting the tick throw now is Mac and Chess um, looking to end the round. It's not going to kill, but it's going to be very close. Fire, though, with the flash kick. Oh, okay, Kara cancel super. on the Galahad super flash. And you are dead good, sir. Fire going to steal the first round with a very emphatic exclamation point on that Sangha. Solid patience from Fire so far. Knowing that Mac and Chess is one of those players that is looking to DP or super out of that situation that they're in. And just waiting for oh, no. to up is giving Fire so much That is a huge starter. Oh, Unfortunate drop from Fire. And Mac and Chess able to escape. That 5C air hit into the orb is a humongous starter that's an easy 5k fire really needed that combo because now mac and chess is getting a chance to play baiting the flash kick that was going to be a big punish too and the burn as well next to the, the air approach this oh, time changing no. it up We're going for that ground approach instead gets caught by the 2c fireball to keep that ground under control as fire meets mac and chess up into the air and there's that insult super coming up, out first of all mac and chess do not plus afterwards what are you pressing as fire just Gets that counter hit against Mac and Chess to take that first game. 
smart stuff going for the 5B as well. Um, that button ground bounces on air hit unusually enough. Um, but it's very good at stabilizing stabilizing weird hits like that. It OTGs. Um, good choice of button by Fire to make the following exchange as easy as possible on himself. And unfortunately, we've gone back to the room, but we're getting back into it. Looks like we're just pondering the characters like for a moment right now. Fire knows that he's just so confident in his character choice already. Just staying on that Kagura and Mac and Chess will be locking into the S again as well. I don't think Mac and Chess has any other characters. So the S really yeah. is the play at the moment. And we'll be seeing how things That's shake correct. up for this second game. The wheel of yeah, Mac and Chess, no other characters. Fire couldn't switch even if he wanted to since he won game one, but the Kagura looking very strong. So I don't think we're going to be seeing any changes. Instant block on the cross up JD. Not a bad start. Able to stabilize the situation. Punish on the Mordred. And fire off to the races. Shout out to Deadwood. I think he says that about 20 times every bracket he commentates, but it's okay. And now we see these um, humongous sword normals coming out from Kagura just at the tip of his range where S's buttons, though big as they are, not quite able to contest. But as soon as you let this character play, she's gonna put you in the corner and put you in the situation, putting out the crest. Never a fun place to be. Yeah, it's going to be the trade, a deep beat from Mac and Chess, an offensive one. And that's going to be the two three catching Mac and Chess from very far. The RC into the backup. Maybe trying to catch out a TP attempt from Fire. I think that was definitely what we were looking for. Knockdown. That's going to be 2 oh, yet again. No. Mac and Chess constantly thinking they're out of range, but still getting caught regardless. Yeah, very... um. Patient sort of flighty offense coming out from Mac and just looking for that DP, looking for something to whip punish, some burst option from fire. But the very patient defense, he just bided his time, waited for the perfect moment to strike with the 2C. And now looking at set point, poised to enter winner's finals, and that counter hit Wyvern is gonna help a lot. Oh, absolutely. Look at this damage just built up as now Fire can start to snowball. And snowball and is exactly low. what he's going to do. But we drop that combo. Oh. Yeah, that can be a little bit. Uh, that combo can be a little bit finicky on some smaller characters. Um, you have to delay that 6B after the orb. That unfortunate drop from Fire, putting himself back in the corner. Empty throw coming out from Mac and Chess, and the burst from Fire. And I like this early burst from Fire as well, because he still has health to scramble with, still has health to play with, especially as Kagura. So he knows that he has two legs to stand on. And can afford to make some guesses, but this conversion, oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, we're once again using that install super and do great effect as that 5B will finally land. And I think that's just because Fire did not choose the barrier that one and that provided just enough space where that 5b could make a connection against fire in his face and now mac and chess takes a round in return for game number two stopping fire from getting a clean four rounds in a row but still though fire is a threat to be worried about and fire is still at even health even footing and things to go either way never mind oh no Oh Speaking no, this is the drop from Mac and Chess. Goes for the crumple route into the Eric, but nobody home. And now it's Fire's turn to put Mac and Chess in the situation. Guessing for game now is Mac and Chess with the DP, lets it rip and finds a target. And you might. Nope, not quite dead. Oh, with the no, RC into the overdrive. The combo, and we should have the EA Ender as well, but I don't think this will be enough. Are you dead? No, it's after flow. Oh, still not enough. Cog your hell. I'm trying to the go the no overdrive on the inside. Overhead. overhead. Activation on deep. That's infinite. Super charge super. What a play from fire. Oh. I, I really do feel like that. I don't know, well, Mac and Chess left a bit of optimization on the table and we could have killed with that combo and not made a pixel. But the comeback from Kagura, knowing that Mac and Chess was betting on Fire making a guess on defense with his high low, trying to go for that instant over to get that easy, quick game ending win. But Fire just playing so strong there. What a play, what a play. Lots of people 
a character I think that lots of people underrate, I think, is Lambda, to a character um, that I think people overrate a little bit in Izanami. Um, but make no mistake, still an absolute monster, and we will be seeing the canon matchup after all. And yeah, the name of the game for Ragna oh. is just going to be trying to play Honest Blaze Blue against what's a very, very sort of dishonest boss character style character. Yeah, even though you can say that Izanami is a bit of a boss character, she does have that executional requirement as well. And that's one of the things I really like about Blaze Blue is that a lot of the top characters do need uh, do have a high barrier of injury, and it all comes to how nice you are if you're able to uh, really show off what makes Izanami so strong. Oh, and no. this is one of those things that makes Izanami so strong is the rib cage, meaning that not damage her or interrupt her at all during those dreams. They call it Shield of Dreams, but it is the stuff of nightmares. Delta cancelled from 5cc, which is punishable, into the rift cage. Um, guard pointed Aerodax to punish and was able to get a huge combo after it. And look at that, that slide is also punishable on block, but it does not matter because ribs are active. Block on the Gauntlet Hades, but does not duck the second hit. You have to duck the second hit if you want to punish. And the EA baited Aerodax, despite all odds, is going to be coming out on top and taking this first round. A great neutral jump from Aerodax to avoid that EA and get that final combo to finish off the first round. And was that Rastar going to be round, round start, start rib cage on the round start Gauntlet Hades? Okay. Oh no. Delta tried to pop Ribcage a second time and unfortunately put themselves in Danger State. And in Danger State, you take a lot more damage. Very simple combo, scraping the upper edge of 3k. Closing in on 4k. This could be a 3-touch game. Yeah, this is one of the scary things one that you have to manage in Guard Ease Nami is the fact that Ribcage does pick up that barrier gauge and you do not want to be going into that Danger State and letting that barrier gauge run out all the way because if you get hit, it's going to be a very high damage combo and it's going to hurt a lot like we're seeing right here if Aerodat does find a confirm and which we overdrive. There's a sleeper on the post OD situation. That's this is really allowing a lot of time for that barrier to recover and we're just sitting out for the death house. Cover the screen and air that from approaching very easily. Yeah, and I like this strategy that Delta is um, using the spinner to cover the ground as opposed to trying to take to the air because in Danger State, you also can't bear your block, which means a lot of moves um, um, since their air unblockable become a lot more threatening. So covering the ground where Ragnar wants to be a lot of the time is a great strategy, I think, but unfortunately, mashing into the frame trap is not, and that's going to be game one to Aerodat, just like that. Yeah, one of the things about letting your barrier gauge run out completely is not only is your are your defense uh, defensive options limited, but also you sort of become a little predictable as well when it comes to what you want to be doing, where you want to be moving in neutral, because you may be a little adverse to jumping uh jumping as much when it comes to having no barrier gauge because you just cannot air block those normals so um yeah that that's one of the things i want to see a little bit more from delta runner is just smarter awareness of that barrier gauge because air has been getting so many uh so so much reward off the fact that delta runner has not been managing it properly yeah and don't forget that while shield the dreams is active izanami gains access to um, a unique dragon punch, um, a unique reversal that is, that dispels the rib cage and um, returns a little bit of barrier on hit, and that's very, very integral to her combo routes when she's going into and out of rib cage. But that ra round start counter hit five egg and it kick things off once again in Aerodat's favor. Not so much for that D Inferno divider though. Aerodat choosing to burst to keep the corner and the momentum. All right. And there are those pressure resets that you always want to be keeping in mind when it comes to Ragna. You want to be making sure that you're checking those pressure resets from Ragna, not letting him get away too, with too much. So patient now is Delta Runner. I'd like to see a little bit of barrier on defense. They took about 15% of their life bar in chip. Um, and you don't necessarily see that too often. Um, but when you're not vigilant about barriering Ragnar pressure, you can lose a lot of health very quickly just by being patient and blocking, which in fairness is what you're supposed to do. Although, for Izanami, it can be a little bit difficult when one, you have so little barrier coming out of ribcage, but two, Aerodite is just chucking Gauntlet Hades. They don't call it the net play unblockable for nothing. 
And there is that crash trigger on Delta Runner as it opens up. He's a uh, Delta Runner one more time for Arrow that. Air that Carnage Scissors. Whatever he wants, Carnage Scissors to end off that combo and bring Air that all the way to set point over Delta Runner. What's the round start going to be now? Instant aggressive option from Delta Runner. And Air that just opted to hold down back, waiting for his opportunity to find that great 5B hit. Yeah, just waited for the dash punch to come out and pressed on the minus frames. And now getting the frame trap with the stagger 2A. Aerodact closing in on this W, but has to be careful with the overdrive from Delta Runner. It could come out at any moment. And Raga has a lot of things that you can overdrive through, but unfortunately, Delta will not find anything. Lock on the 6B from Aerodact. Things are looking very good, but does not tech the throw. And there's that DP we were talking about. So Delta's able to get it out just in time and avoid putting themselves in danger state. That thing's much more about uh, keeping that barricade Yay. active. Getting a throw as well, which is going to be covering a lot. So we can activate Ripkid one more time. The air that will choose to respect it. Yeah, that was that command grab we saw from Izanami in case you forgot she had it. That move will also regenerate barrier on hit. And Delta is going to carry that to their first round win. Going to need a couple more of those, but you got to start somewhere. Once round start ribs is definitely... Definitely not a bad way to start dispelling the rib cage um, once again to avoid danger state. I like that now from Delta Runner, not putting themselves in danger state too recklessly. They got punished very hard, but speaking of hard punishes, this fatal counter blood side is going to pay dividends. You might as well be in danger state with that fatal counter, because that's going to be basically the same amount of damage increase that Air that would have gotten. Uh, had that happen as well, but instead we're going to go for the super to get a lot of damage on the uh, wake up and air that is going to the quick rise two A on wake up. That wasn't just two A, that was quick rise two A. Bro wasn't blocking shit and baits the super, but late on the punish. That super is deceptively minus on block. Overdrive cancel for the conversion though, and this is going to be it into the super. Oh, no, no, you can drop the combo. Delta Runner is still alive, but still play perfectly. And the blow from Aerodat catching Delta Runner, sweeping them off their feet, and sweeping Aerodat into losers' top six. So unfortunate for Delta Runner. I like seeing lots and lots of overdrive on defense um, coming out from Delta. It's a great option to represent against Ragnar because you can overdrive 6D, 2D, all of his special moves and get punishes on them. Even if you're early on a 5B, you can get a jab punish with that. But unfortunately, just wasn't able to get anything started. And we saw Delta actually land an EA early in that last round, get active flow, and eventually build a second overdrive, which unfortunately also didn't work out. But yeah, good stuff to Aerodat being vigilant about that as well and altering his pressure to compensate for it. Oh, S and the Ragnar. I'm pretty sure this name also, you, you can also call him Mac and Cheese if you want. I think it was supposed to be Mac and Cheese, but he misspelled it. So he just ran with it. I think that's I'm, literally how his I'm name calling him Mac and Chess until I'm calling him Mac and Chess until he corrects it. Oh no, I'm calling him Mac and Chess too because that's literally his name. But anyways, Mac and Chess already playing some good early starts to, uh, hitting Arrow down here in neutral with those fireballs. That's going to be the big problem dealing with those fireballs because they go so low to the ground because they're so big. And that also gives Mac and Chess an opportunity to go for that install or get up close enough. Oh, there's the big overhead. And there's the Oh card. no! Like Mac and Chess classic. We try to go for the purple yes, throw again too. But uh, we just mess up yeah, the that's a little bit there. Wake up Mordred. I think that was a DP actually that he input lost. I'm not totally sure. Counter assault through Aerodat. Trying to make this hero burst work, but unfortunately the instant overhead is gonna deny that possibility. Um strong round for Mac and Chess. And like you said, the fireballs are very much gonna be defining this neutral. Some of the strongest fireballs in the game. And the problem for Ragnar is how do you get in when you have no first full screen options? Mac and Chess choosing to burst, getting the anti-air. But Aerodot firing right back with the DP on the drop combo. Very back and forth in the second round. Good block on the gauntlet. Hey, he's not laying that overhead. Find its mark. And Mackinchess will go for that cross up. Uh, go for that uh, Go for that cross up, JD. My bad. Because plus him on a block. DPRC into the throw. And we just go for that cross up, JD, once again. Oh, no. That cheeky dash under cross up, I believe with the 2D. 
No, the 5 D. I want to say. No, that's 2D. And Aaron at pulling out a trick of his own with the Hell's Fang oh, no, no, right, right. into the throw, but Mac and Chess is not so easily fooled by his own tricks. Was baiting the burst, finally gets it. Oh, it nice anti-air on the DPI. Nice. Great anti-air, yes. Not awesome totally never. sure what Aerodot was looking for there, I can't lie. But Mac and Chess gonna lock up that first game. That, that S6B is a disgusting air button, by the way. As you can see, it's humongous. It's incredibly fast for its size. The invul comes out super fast as well. And the recovery is also very good. It's damn near unpunishable. I remember actually... Um, it's unpunishable, but it ends your turn. So... It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's also like minus that. 9 on block. It's yeah. minus nine on block, so at range it's basically unpunishable. S has to RPS with a special move, but even on whiff, it's so difficult to punish. I remember seeing shortly after Combo Breaker 2023 when Banana Ken was still on the game, he was labbing how to punish at S6B, and even with Kokonoe and Kokonoe JB and Kokonoe movement could not figure out really a way to do it consistently. He was just befuddled, as we all are, by that button. Aerodot is about to be befuddled by this corner exchange, unfortunately getting air unblockable, I believe, by something, I'm not sure what, but losing a lot of health. Oh, drop the combo, but still, we are, we just have those S-privileged hitboxes there, going from the other side, catching Aerodot in all these situations, and now Mac and Chess is on set point over Aerodot. Yeah, speaking of privileged hitboxes, that DP is enormous. It is 13 frames, which is slow for reversal. Slow enough to be safe jabs. Um, the reaction there, though, from Mac and Chess on the Gauntlet Hades. Nice overdrive from Erida, and he's able to get the 2A punish. Yeah, it's a really good idea to overdrive S in a lot of her drive modes because they're all susceptible to the OG punish. So well played from Aerodat, recognizing the situation and acting accordingly, using those resources, getting that right, flow, second thing to get fatal. even more damage. You are gonna with die. Combo. And Aerodat is gonna find a round. Yeah, the first round of Still. this set so far. Let's hope, see if we can make it two. Let's see if we can even things up. One, one. Let's not just going to take this round here and now. Plusing all those fireballs, giving plenty of time to go for oh, that no. install. And you gotta keep in mind that that two, one, four key does have a follow up when it's in install state. Yeah, that follow up also makes it plus on block because why the fuck not? Yep. And there's the burst from Aerodat, does not want to get put in another reset, put in another scramble, but I think this throw is going to do it. 50 meter and overdrive, but the drop combo, not what you want, it doesn't matter. Driplet is just too strong. Going to clean up the scramble from Mac and Chess, and he's going to take it 2-0 with the perfect. Just like that, Aerodat cleaned up by Mac and Chess. Man, that was way more one-sided than I thought it would be. Coming in through losers, trying to make that losers grand finals run happen, just because why not? And oh my gosh, we are starting things off with the Susano specific text. That's what was taking us out for so long. No, he's had that for a while. Um, um, I know he's since I think Excal Excal and Ice School fought in one big final tournament a long time ago, and yeah. then they put that in their decode. Yeah, okay. I, I, I believe I knew they had it at some point. I didn't know he had it this entire time. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I believe that was no, TMS. That you're referring to. But regardless, yeah, it, yeah probably TMS number one. Is uh. Showing why Carl's so strong. I mean, this is the lockdown pressure that you're going to come to protect this character. And there's that crush. Bro. him up. That's going to be a lot of damage from this EA. Yeah, and you saw Excel pop overdrive to save Ada, prevent her from dying, and now the gauge is completely full. Counter Assault gonna get baited, and this looks like checkmate. No DP, only overdrive, and Kets is gonna go ahead and spend it. Gonna try and steal this round, but it's looking very, very grim. And this is another player that Kets Goto has historically always struggled with. Scout relays showing that it's probably not going to be too much different working on a perfect hazard to get hit just yet and continuing to push Quetzal Goto out and blocking all of these overhead attempts that Quest is trying 
do. Ah, uh, six. And there's that Carl six A locking up the round A long, perfect for Excal, but a perfect nonetheless. And you can see Excal, not just a strong character, very strong player, able to stay patient, lock out Susano of all characters. Not a character that is fun for most people to block, especially Carl not having a reversal, but waiting, biding his time, waiting patiently for the perfect moment to strike and has yet to be touched. The one and a half seasonal health bars there is the unblockable and the crush trigger. It's looking terrible. Oh, and the first coming out. Oh but no! Potential, finding a hit is going to deny Excel to play the perfect and it's going to be unlocking a lot of specials for Quetzal Goto. A lot of key specials including the DP spin and ground viper. So he's looking for one more good hit really cash out on this damage that he has available, but unfortunately for Quetzal Goto, Scalar Blaze will be popping that OG to inborn all the way throughout, and actually that EA will be enough to kill. I am actually surprised that kill. I love Active Flow EA! Yeah, that is that one quirk about um, Exceed Excel, the reversal that you get in Overdrive. If you don't have Active Flow and you hit an EA, it will put you into Active Flow immediately. But if you do already have active flow, it'll deal about double damage. So instead of doing a little over 2k, you're suddenly looking at 4k, which is a humongous chunk of life, no matter how big your health bar is. And that is going to be all she wrote for game one. All right. Game one going by very quickly. Very strong play from Excalibur Blades so far. This is the only stream match we've seen of him as of yet, and he's already showing his stuff. No, can't be surprised that this is the kind of strength that we're seeing from him. Incredibly consistent player. Basically could win anything he entered if he wanted to. I don't think I don't think it's any stretch of the imagination to say he's in conversation for the best player in the West right now. Yeah, I can see that. In the ranks of Monarch and Ice Cool. And I think Kobe is in that conversation too. Um, with his absolutely meteoric rise in the past two years. But, unfortunately, all are equal um, under the set play of Ada with Excalibur Blades at the helm. And Quest you can really was just very purple. The Quest really was just 1v1-ing Ada there for a moment. Now Ada out of here, but I don't think Excalibur cares. Oh, it doesn't matter. He can just it doesn't matter. Ada all the way on over. Pop the overdrive and cause Ada to just regenerate so much faster. And now you're getting put in the situation yet again. Defending the counter assault though, able to find a way out. Block on the 6D, no resources to save pets. Gonna eat the punish. And this is basically checkmate. You have to block one more. You do have to block one mix it. And then you have to block another one. And then you have to block another one, but Excal is going to choose to back off and play the, play the time game, play the life speed game, play lame, win game. The mantra of Justin Wong. And you can see why it works so well for him, working very well for Excal. Another perfect. Yeah, Excal, I would say, also just has a really um, good thumb to the pulse of how Quest likes to approach, um, uh, uh, how Quest's play playstyle really ticks. It's the fact that Quetz really just wants to get in by any means, and a lot of times kind of just misjudges their spacing or other factors on the field. And when you're playing a character like Carl, you can take full advantage of that compared to a lot of other characters that would be in the cast. And you can see Quetz um, blowing that burst right away, not waiting for a chance to try and escape the unblockable. What's as much health as he can have in this kind of situation? Because you need more health to be able to survive more hits like this. But unfortunately, so many of Carl's hits just put you back into the situation regardless. Spacing out the massive DP on the side of Susano, and that is going to do it. And straight into the Astral. Optimal conversion. Crush him in the machine. That's going to be the game and the set to Excal 2-0. I love that quick hit confirm into Astral as well. Notice like, okay, cool. I found the hit I needed straight into it hell no fuck it confirming that was definitely astral on block if cats block that 6c you sure forward through the rest of this packet as we watch yeah winners speaking of finals. winners we've got winners finals dawn versus, dawn versus fire. fire and we 
we got Don bringing out the Mew once again for this matchup. Um, I'm very curious as to why. Um, I poke fun at Don a lot of the time because he hates playing Relius into Kagura, basically because of me. But his Mew is a real character, um, and he's able to represent what this character does very well. And what this character does is be annoying and keep her turn for forever. But unfortunately, Fire just able to find the gap in the pressure and reverse the situation. And there it is. We are just playing as annoying as possible. Staying up all this turrets with patience from Fire, waiting for their opportunity to weave right through. Was well played. That was a rough drop all out. Unfortunately. Nice throw! Don able to get the throw off the air. JBJA rebeat. So little block stun that you have to worry about the throw when you land. And look at that, there's nothing you can do. You just have to hold it. Fire choosing to spend the meter to escape the situation. But unfortunately, Don gonna get clipped by an overhead and Fire choosing to lock out the burst. That is gonna be a very, very high damage kill. A little bit of overkill. Um, but I can't really blame him for spending the overdrive, stabilizing the situation, and securing the first round in winner's finals. Because he will need plenty of those. We are in first to three territory, don't you forget it. Mm -hmm. And this is also a bit of a polarizing matchup for Togo as well. So taking any rounds, taking any games is going to be valuable in the long run. And look, the fire is looking to take one more with an explosive hit here. Yeah, that was a huge amount of damage he was able to get off of that. And it's just been all fire all the time so far. Don, not. Not able to get a ton started. Fire's just been a little bit more consistent so far. Um, able to find the gaps in Don's pressure, let the CFAF rip, get the escape options. Unfortunate drop in. Now Don's out some meter. But there's the DP. That's another thing that Don likes having in this matchup is also having a meterless reversal, which Relius does not. And it helps a lot for getting out of Kagura's pressure. Don't forget about that back dash, which you've not seen a lot yet. Nice burst bait from Fire off the punish and that is going to be a lightning fast game one i wonder what that uh raw dp from dawn was for exactly maybe to check fire as a pro but it feels like a very risky option that his his only fallback plan from it was that burst right there that fire immediately i think it was a misinput okay yeah i was I like it was a that's really I, I don't think it's actually what he wanted okay that, that would make that will make a little bit more sense Either way, um, yeah, it's, in that burst probably could have been like a panic option afterwards, knowing that that was a bit of a slip up. And interestingly enough, we're switching to the Ragna instead. Maybe, does he really hate the Kagura matchup this much, or is he just messing around with his characters? I don't know. Don also does this thing from time to time, because he has multiple characters. He'll set up a randomizer and play whatever character it lands on. So it's possible that he's just spinning the wheel, possible that he wants the counter picks, um, wants a more simple, straightforward game plan to bring to the table. Because Ragnar does well into Kagura too. I think this matchup um, is very, very, um, very even. But unfortunately, getting hit by the 6BB, there's a very knowledge checky mix up you do not see very often from Kagura. Don gonna be kicking himself for that. But it doesn't matter, he's firing right back with this combo, putting fire into the corner. Letting the throw rip, no tech from fire. And man, wow, this now, Ragna from Dawn is just looking so clean so far. Yeah, just absolutely dissecting fire on the offense. No block on the gauntlet. Hades, very, very commanding round so far from Dawn. I think the counterfix is working out if that was his intent. Fire ending his turn after 2 dB, it's minus 7 on block. Nice 5A anti-air confirming straight into the 6C. You actually can't confirm that. I misspoke. You have to let the 6C rip immediately or the combo will drop. Good stuff to fire knowing that that anti-air would hit and he's able to get a great chunk of damage off of that and the corner. Instant OD activation to lock out the burst and get some early damage here. Yeah, Ragnar gets a huge extension from that. Otherwise, he only gets 5v5c health thing and overdrive well spent in my opinion. Trade combo, you're dead. 
Black Fire taking really. the Don Ragna to GameStop says, I don't want this 5v anymore. Give me a big fat 2c counter hit, please and thank you very much. And the GameStop employee turns to Don and says, that'll be uh, 7 cents. There's a wake up Oh, but that 2c whipping. Not very good. Don not able to fully capitalize off of it. I don't think that Blood Scythe out of the combo was quite what he wanted. You have to be careful using Blood Scythe in this matchup too because Kagura is very, very well equipped to anti-air that with BFAP. But you're trying to overdrive the Gauntlet Hades, by the way, just a couple of frames too late and unfortunately got a burst instead. The 6C whiffs and that's going to be a whiff punish. And debating the CFAP, that is all she wrote, is what I would say. Man, the amount oh, of early calls you have made. That. We gotta be betting against you from now on. This is what I do. I am the commentator's curse machine. Don gonna lock it up after all. One to one. And the Ragna looking very comfortable in this matchup. That number is really looking good for having showed three characters so far. Uh, it's really, <laughs> I guess it's really hard to tell um, how much worse he is when it comes to Ragna. And it shows that, you know, he's probably not even worse at all. He's, uh, this character is able to stand on even footing with Fire as main. Please select your character. Oh, are we seeing the character swap in return? Yes, we will. Fire swapping to one of his own pockets to try and combat the Ragna. Instead, we're switching over to the Noel. Maybe not as confident with the Ragna matchup as Kagura. Like you said, it can be a bit of a tricky one. It can be a bit of a polarizing one. So we're just going to be switching over to the Noel to get the work done instead. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily endorse this pick. I think Ragna beats Noel pretty cleanly. Not like, it's not... It's not a nightmare matchup for Noel, but I think Ragna does better into Noel certainly than um, than he does into Kagura. But I think your point is right. It's a matter of confidence, and Fire is definitely going to be feeling a lot more confident after an opening like this. Look at the massive life drain already from the health bar on the side of Dawn. Unfortunately, though, that combo drop once again, um, proving to be a thorn in the side for Fire. Blocked though on the Gauntlet Hades this time. Blood size fatal on the 4D, and that's a burst. Yeah, absolutely. We need, we do, we do not want to be taking that damage right there, but we're only taking this damage regardless. Burst already spent, so that's all going to be going into Don's pocket. There's the counter assault on the double overhead. Air to air conversion now. Um, that JC from the wall is a very good air button, actually. I think it hits both sides. It's very fast, has a strong hitbox. In exchange, though, it is not an overhead. And Don is going to be closing this round out with a meaty throw. Just bulldozing his way out of the Okazeme situation and locking up the round. Ooh, our round start, but a throw from Don is going to be on the early advantage, taking our Amelia into the corner with all that corner carry. Moving down to the ground here, can't gain anything off of that all too much, but still put into this Oki situation as Dawn finds a crush trigger and fire crush trigger. Fire, I think, what did overdrive there and again was just a couple frames too late because could have probably gotten a jab punish. Noel's jab is six frames, tied for the fastest in the game. Her crouching jab, that is. There are some standing jabs, um, some 5As that are five frames. Ragnus is one of them, but it doesn't hit crouching. Oh, and the chase down uh, from Fire. on the roll. Don trying to skip and the, the corner the to the other corner instead. You are dead. Noel with some very strong meter dump abilities. Doesn't even need the second super. That 6B from Noel, by the way, is 26 frames. One of the slower standing overheads in the game for sure. Most of them average around that 22 to 24 frame range. Ragnar 6B and Gauntlet Hades, for example, are both 24 frames. The massive press from Fire. And he is going to be rewarded big time with this corner carry. Oh, the activation tries to EA, but you fire oh, the EA! Frames. So smart from Fire. Huge read from Fire. That was a great read, and no meter on the side of Don left the DP rip anyway. 
absolutely no fear. And that's the kind of decision you have to be able to make when you have the DP. Is do you let it rip knowing that if you're wrong, the game is over and you're dead? And now you're in a situation like this where Fire, um, one or two good hits away also from losing the game, but gets the air to air. And that is going to be it. Fire closing out the game. It was a lot more back and forth. Um, but Fire again coming out on top, going up two games to one, still has one more game to win. But the Noel looking very good. Now, do you think we're going to be seeing another character swap from Dawn, or we're going to be sticking with the Ragnar? I think we might be seeing another character swap. Who's to say? Well, we'll be seeing exactly if I'm correct or you know, if I'm wrong. As uh, we start to ready up between these two players for what could potentially be the final game of the set if Fire can close this one out immediately. If I'm Don, I'm picking Relius into Noel because you get an incredible amount of stability from just being able to lock that character down and apply mix ups. But Don gonna stick with the plan and he is locked in now on the Ragna for the rest of the set, cannot change. So it is Ragna or bust here in winner's finals at Boston Blue Beat. Winner will be guaranteed a portion of that chicken nuggy money payout for top two and a winner's side spot in grand finals. There's the DP from Don to kick things off. Yeah, especially looking on loser's side and staying who exactly is there. You want to be at Ooh. And actually make sure that you guarantee that second place placement. That cheeky little drive maneuver from Fire pushing Don into the corner, but he's gonna push Fire right back out with the blood side, but it doesn't matter. Fire is gonna get the solid hit, and he is gonna continue to accumulate a life lead. All it in indeed, and another solid hit from Fire is gonna open up Don one more time. Fire's gonna to take him one more hit. He's trying to go for the low, game. but what a nice jump buggy Don jump. Avoid it. Yeah, that is a very tricky mix-up, but Don was ready with the fuzzy jump. And able to escape. There's the purple. Looking for a looking for a TRM, I believe. Fire does not take the bait. Chucks the revolver blast RC behind it. And Don gonna hero burst and pay for it. Assistant Rebel 2. Fire. This is point. huge for fire. On set point. Poised to lock up the winner's finals. The winner's side grand final spot, excuse me. No burst now on the side of Don has yet to get a solid hit. Fire continues to apply pressure, continues to build momentum. Another hard knockdown, what's for breakfast? That 2C from Noel, that double hitting low that she's doing, by the way, is plus unblock, you have to hold it. Nice. Don able to weasel his way out of the corner though. And they're oh, and the end jump low. This might be the round going to Dawn. We're recovering some health as well, which is just continuing to widen this lead that Dawn has built up so far. Yeah, only one, only one hit, only one combo's worth of health left for Fire RC, but no conversion, unfortunately. And Dawn chucking the health spank, and it's gonna work out. Scary, scary stuff. But able to just. Put the pedal to the metal and let the risky play rip and reap the reward as the Grim Reaper does. Winning the Bookie battle again is on. Continuing. Very simple. Stay alive in this tournament, but the overdrive from Fire. Huge conversion. This is going to put Don in the corner. He's going to take a little bit over 3.5k. Forty looking for the DP on the drive. 6B comes back. 16 frames is that standing overhead. Generally, you want to block Noah High when she's in her drive. And the roll catch, we're going to be seeing a burst from Don. There it is. Rock on the gauntlet. Oh, he's not cornering yeah. himself. And that's going to be it. Fire. Moving on through Fire with the winner's Michael. side of the bracket. Securing his spot in winner's side grand finals and a piece of that match Marino pie as he approaches a second place for the tournament tonight and sends dom down to losers very nicely done with the micro walk on the high double jump um to allow don to corner himself and capitalize on that positioning to lock up the round well played by fire on both the noel and the kagura yeah fire um 
So um, I've had a couple conversations with Fire now about who he really considers his main, because a lot of the time you will see him on the Cogger, and then he'll occasionally rip the Noel out or rip the Tager out. And a lot of the time people are surprised by how solid he is on those characters as well. He doesn't really consider Cogger to be his main. He considers all he considers himself to really main all three characters equally. And he puts a lot of investment into all three of them. So I'm not surprised. Um as much as I'm surprised on one hand that he's able to make this work with a character that a lot of people consider to be um a lot of people consider Noah bottom tier. Um a, and a lot of those people consider her to be undisputed bottom one. She is Firmly on the struggle bus, but fire makes it work. Yes, it just shows that even if the player, even if the character isn't the greatest, all you do need is good player piloting you, and some things change. Everyone thought Bang was just mid tier. Now people are starting to think that he's more of a high tier character with all these great Bang players uh, just coming out of the woodworks. No, absolutely. Anybody can cook on basically whatever character, because every character, no matter who you are, has strengths you can leverage. Leverage, excuse me. Um, in the meantime, though, for our loser semis max, we've got Mac and Chess and Excalibur Blades on two extremely strong characters with Arl and S. Overdrive through the 6D, and Excalibur gonna get a very strong start to this game. Now, I don't think I've seen that is what these players play before, and it looks like Mac and Chess is unsure of how to defend against this Carl pressure. But there's that DPRC. That's the universal. It'll work against anybody. It looks like it yeah. works a bit to an extent against Excalibur as he was able to get out of that situation. But Excalibur doing a great job of just blocking everything that Mac and Chess is throwing at him, not finding any good hits. Oh, and a no. great guard cancel on the plus frames from the Gwen. Yep, there's that dangerous defense we were talking about. You eat the counter assault and you get put in the corner. No punish on the counter assault on the side of Mac and Chess, but the late air dash gonna lock up the game. Excuse me, the round for X Cal took very little damage. I believe only took chip. Oh, punish on the fireball. X Cal picking right up where he left off. Nice combo, actually. Really, really optimizing this and still able to push Mac and Chess into the corner. That one hurt a little bit to watch. And Mac and Chess is probably getting his jump or some other kind of input eaten by that frame trap 6B, that advancing low that Carl has DPs at this time. And now he's gonna get started. Will be nice sight swap. That's a very stylish side swap combo that Mac and Chess does. Corners himself again. Gawain RC lets the instant overhead rip. Putting a serious dent in Excal's health bar, but it's not over till it's over, and there's the burst. Oh, and the nails oh, no. popping. Mac and Chess to the other side, so Excalibur Blaze can just go for whatever you little want. Hounds like the Vache through. Vivace through the DP to prevent the whiff, and that is all she wrote. Precious little health after that dangerous defense. And Mac and Chess just felt felt the pressure, let the DP rip, but there was nobody home. And with confident play, Excal, once again, like expected, I would say, uh, takes that first game over Mac and Chess. And it's a bit of a similar situation to all the other Excal matches we've seen so far. I mean, it doesn't feel like people are. Uh, it doesn't feel like a lot of people are really, uh, you know, unsure. Yeah, that is the mark of a top player, a player who's consistent, a player who knows what he's doing and knows that um, his hands and his brain and his eyes are all going to be. Um, online in sync all the time, and every decision you make is swift and decisive. Tall order for Mac and Chess to overcome this kind of matchup, but not impossible, man. No, not at all. And Mac and Chess already going back to his usual game plan, backing up, tossing all those fireballs, doing some damage to the doll, and now Mac and Chess finding a really good hit, setting up that 5D press, but that is a horrible oh, place no. to get OD'd on pause button. Oh wow, you're just gonna go for an overhead? Excal for an interrupt. Yeah, you're exploding for that. Mac and Chess unfazed, naturally letting the DP rip a second time. 
And I like that we're going for those instant overheads as well with the trash packing them up. Because uh, without meter, instant overhead JCs are not safe at all. Okay, blocking that fireball. Not everyone is ready to block that fireball. Not everyone is able to quickly recognize that Ada was activated from full screen. So Nakamchest already one step ahead in that time. Yep, definitely seen this matchup before. Dangerous defense though gonna come into play once again. And I know Mackin just doesn't like seeing that. Uh, off of a guard cancel. A guard cancel. Yep. Come on, bro. meter. <laughs> yeah, 50 meter, but no cost. No uh... cost is too much for that kind of defense. He's certainly 10 axing right now, going to the moon. As x Cal is just continuing to lay down the hurt on a Mac and Test. You know? And once again, x Cal just always knows the game stays. Like, okay, you know what? I have my puppet out. I have the health advantage. I have the lead. I'm on set point. I don't have to approach you if I don't need to. And x Cal just lets Mac and Test come to him. And in a sense, as well, uh, Mac and Chess is kind of paying themselves for x Cal. And x Cal is able to recognize instantly where what he can exploit and exploit he does x Gal is going to be moving up 2-0 over mac and Chess to continue on through this new side of the bracket yeah very very commanding performance from a player that we are no stranger to seeing make deep runs in bracket after bracket after bracket and it's pretty easy to see why after a set like that mac and Chess, like he's a strong player don't get me wrong um has a lot of tricks up his sleeve able to do a lot of work with s but against a player like x cal you just have to be able to not just match the tier gap so to speak um and match the absolutely freakish strength of kara but you also have to be able to match the fundamentals the defense um you have to be able to think on x cal's level no matter how many tricky resets or scrambles you're able to pull out um a lot of the time experience is going to be the key factor that swings those interactions into the favor of the stronger player. Okay, even if you do have experience, especially against Carl, right? Even if you do have experience, man, it feels like you're always seeing some kind of new mix up with that character that you're not prepared for. Um, <laughs> kind, of, kind of like a Venom from Guilty Gear in a, in, in a way where Venom can kind of just build his own pressure and is very hard to really recognize what he does with every single setup. That's kind of how it feels with Carl a little bit, where you're never really too sure what he's going to do. You can't really pin it down very pin it down very well. But what I can pin down is that I believe Dawn is on the Dawn is on Hazama, yeah. Hazama. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, it looks like Ed Cal is on the Ragnar this time. Okay, yeah. I thought I thought Dawn was Ragnar for a second, but it looks like XL, yeah. On the Ragna and Dawn on the Hazama. Dawn might just be going random to like kill the rest of his tournament. But XL just confident is Ragnar maybe or you know, kind of just messing around with the characters like as well. He's in the finals after all. The both these players are fighting to get into second place at least. Absolutely. No, x -Cal has a very strong Ragnar. x -Cal, Like, x -Cal Ragnar still beats, like, almost the entire player base. Like, it's very easy to forget because he plays Carl, who's such a strong character. And, like, people like to call Carl players carry, but x -Cal really is just that guy. And he makes Ragnar look that strong. He makes Ragnar look as strong as Carl. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. We'll see, uh, we'll see how much of that really rings through. Both these players are really just going so, uh, bam, 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 bam here uh, when it comes to damage with our combos. Ooh, but we're see, even health for trading hits back and forth. We're both in active flow. And x is about to get that OD back very soon as well. And that's going to be a very prevalent factor that Don's going to keep in mind for the rest of this round. Lockdown with the 5A as he drops on the What as the a Hotengen ho on reaction. Very well played from Dombo, not able to get that full combo afterwards for the double seeker. Yeah, unfortunately the combo not there, that would have been death. So I'm gonna have to find one more hit to close out this round. Timer getting low now, under 20 seconds, very little health left on both sides. Excal baiting the burst, I think, actually. Oh, that is gonna be it, recognizing the second hit. Don is not gonna burst. Swiftly takes the round. I say swiftly, but there was 11 seconds left. 
You know, the Don is really just looking for the perfect opportunity to go for these pains and following up on them. Because Exile is doing such a great job at just kind of just threatening Dawn, saying like, hey, if you follow these chains down, I'm going to hit you. And Dawn is, in a way, kind of scared of that and not playing as comfortably as I think Kazama's normally would. But that Potengen combo here will definitely be uh, putting Dawn into a comfortable position because Exile has to build up, uh, has to fight against such a huge lead that Dawn has built up so far. Yeah, unfortunately, Don once again dropping a combo that could have given him the kill. XCOM might start to mount a comeback in this situation. That strike throw from Hazama, very strong though, is what Don has been utilizing to get XCOM's health this low. But now he's running into a problem with another strike throw character. What the? Anyone want to explain that one? I'd, I got nothing. I'd have got nothing either. Well, well, what do you what do you make of that? The I saw reverse things, hit on the blood side. Yeah, I, I saw things happen on the screen. <laughs> yeah, things indeed happen on the screen. Nice overdrive from Dawn through the Ragna 6B. Unfortunately, uh, once again, not able to complete the combo. These are starting to add up. Oh, wow. That's going to be a good counter hit for, uh, for Dawn, but... It's now choosing to burst, getting that burst up early for Dawn. Oh no! This is so rough. That 2C anti air from Hazama a little bit too slow. Dawn not quite quick enough on the trigger. Got the anti air the first time, not this time, and once again eating a throw. Oh, and here's the pickup popping up into the air, into the corner for the side swap. And. Get the hard knockdown very soon. There we go, hitting the floorboards and backing up with the stance, but uh, not a little too far, so we weren't able to probably punish that DP that uh, Scout just threw out like that. Overdrive through 2C, not the button you want to overdrive through Ragnus Plus there. Hell Spang RC, the string continues. Dead Spike pressure reset. Don very patient blocking it out. Finding the mash, but not finding the combo. Unfortunately, there's a 2C Antier. Still unable to find an escape is gone. Finally choosing to counter assault. All right. Oh, back here with the stance once again. And you see Excal really change. how he go. Yeah, I mean, what an adaptation from Excal. Recognizing that, hey, Don's going to go for this a lot. And instead, just work for that chase down with the 5B, catching him out, taking this burst here from Don. And is going to be getting a burst of his own back very soon, or he can use it as an offensive option with Overdrive, but instead he's going to use it as a defensive option oh. with that burst. And that's going to be a time out. Both of these players being, coming down so close, lasting for so long, but it's going to have to end at some point. In that situation, Exile was way more mindful of the health lead than Don as Excal nets himself that first game yeah you do not see that every day um the timeout between hozama and ragna and some might say that that is for the I'll best say uh, I, I would say it's a lot of respect both ways when it comes to both these players like excal is, res is respecting hazama's options but also don is respecting a lot of excal's options especially like i said when it comes to covering those angles covering those spaces that don may want to approach from when it comes to these chains um options like ja jc these are fantastic normals because they can be very active they're very big and they basically cut off these lanes on the screen where if don chooses to fall up on these chains then that's going to be leading to a full big hit for excal no yeah absolutely very much a slow and steady wins the race approach from both of these players and they know that that's what they have to do because we're back in first to three territory Best of five, three games for the win. Overdrive on the redash from Excal, blowing it early. Not gonna find very much off of it though. Yeah, maybe Excal was just. Yeah, not gonna find very much off of it. I feel like Excal was expecting a lot more in terms of what he was looking for. But it, regardless, Don is the one that's gonna be taking that first from Excal and will be doing oh, wow. as we go. But now Excal is in active flow, so that Overdrive and Burst will be coming back very fast. And his meter gain is gonna be coming through very fast as well. And getting the lead here. Excal is really turning up the heat. Closing in on a full stick of butter now. That's the that air, crazy. which is a cure of the round. Yeah, just had a slight weight there, then jumped up in the air. 
And Don maybe tried to chicken block. Doesn't, didn't want to worry about the high low mix that the X Gal was threatening and just got thrown in the Don's trying to get revenge. Don is trying to get revenge is what he's doing. Let's the air throw rip right back at you. Command grab, insult to injury. Unfortunately, again, the combo is not there. And these are really starting to add up. Don has got to start finding these hits, finding these conversions, putting X Cal in these offense situations. Because he's losing out on a lot of damage. Xcal, meanwhile, is completing all of his combos, optimizing them as much as he possibly can. Still getting like 3k every single hit, making it look very even in the damage race. Alright, the chase down from Xcal absolutely yeah, relentless. Like it feels like Don builds a lead. Xcal is immediately taking that back and taking a lead of his own. I mean, look at this. Oh, and as I say that, Don is going to be going straight into his hot engine. Actually, he's enough here for another speaker if he chooses to go for it. I think that's exactly what he's going to do, but not if he drops no. that combo after the OD. It looks like that's going to be a complete waste of OD for Don, but not a complete waste of the positioning as he was able to stand up an air throw, meeting Excal up in the air. And that's kind of the double edged sword that Excal is playing by going for these JAs and JCs. is the fact that Don, when he's when spaced and timed properly, can actually go for those air throws or even air buttons punish x Gal for uh, trying to meet him up there. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, we're seeing this more patient offense coming out from both sides with the strike throw. Command grab, nobody home, and x Gal going to take this one to the bank. Pushing Don into the corner. Has the overdrive advantage as well as the life advantage. Counter hit 5D. No confirmed though from x Gal. Don definitely got lucky there. Dead Spike, no dash cancel. Was there a mistake from the side of x Cal and Don punishing it with the 2A, but again, not able to find very much after what a dash under. That would be the second game going to x Cal, and that only means one more game uh, will be deciding if x Cal gets to move on into loser side grand finals right about now. I mean, just a really strong performance so far, and whenever it feels like Don does get some advantage, x is immediately just sticking his hands in his pocket and saying, no, give me that back. Yeah, it definitely feels like um, Don is just playing the uphill battle on the Hazama. I will not be surprised in the slightest to see a character switch. Oh, Terumi. Okay. I will be surprised to see a switch to Terumi, however. I don't know. I f this feels like a character that Don would play. Like, I personally... It is a character that Don plays. In order to make me And uh, that is all I will say. In order to make me surprised, I see, like... I, 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 I see him, like, on a Valkenheim or something. <laughs> then I'll be like, oh, okay. That's the game we're playing. Oh my gosh, we just she, like, booked it. Yeah, like, look at this. x Cal does not care. Like, it's Terami. For Pete's sake, it's Terami. What is Terami gonna do? Terami is going to eat this overdrive combo from Excalibur Blades. Don has yet really defined an answer to this very, very strong Ragna. The DDP whiffs and no punish. Oh my gosh, Don on incredibly low life here. One more hit, gonna do him in. Next guy selling through more to get with these specials. That's gonna be a sleeper from Don on defense. And it's gonna be connecting with Excalibur Blade. Yeah, this is definitely looking rough for Don and looking even more rough after that. The overdrive getting put to sleep. X Cal confirming in the Carnage Scissors going on set point. Don on his tournament life. Maybe not with a character most people would like to be on their tournament life with. Jeremy also considered one of the weaker characters in the game. That was Has come back rock. potential though, if nothing else. Huh? That right. was really weird Don's looking, I'm not even gonna lie. Back. Oh, but as I say that, Ixbao, find the low hit. Find all the items you need, find all the hits you need. Don and Ben, really low life, critical life here. Do 
is, who is, five A's, two D's, wings are gonna open up, there it is, and that's actually gonna be a burst, uh, being pressed immediately before x Gal tries to pop that OD, a bit of an unfortunate time for x Gal, but that does Hello. matter, on is fresh out of burst and fresh out of OD, which are both tools very important for Jeremy Pan. I believe this is gonna be death. The meter is so important to Jeremy. Don able to find the kill with the staircase into Sotenjin. Made it look a little bit more precarious, but that 4.4k is gonna be enough. Don gonna stay alive. He does fight into the two A's, catching Don on the chicken block once again. The latest JC air dash. Unfortunately, not able to find the combo. Counter hit 6A. This time, the 2D will connect. And Don gonna get a full combo and build an absolute metric ton of meters. Overdrive. So Tengen gonna punish the blood side. Don almost converted that, actually. Oh, wow. That would Without any resources, Mr. X Gal's name. He continues to find it, uh, find out how to make it work. Some way, somehow, anytime, any place, Excal is just continuing to lay on this hurt on a Dawn, and with that six A, it's going to be very close to seven. Dawn chooses not to burst, and Dawn's going to be spraying that burst immediately. Peck from Excal has a hundred meter on the table. There's that DP whip, and that's the punch from Dawn coming in. So she's back. He's he's coming won't back be enough though. to kill. Excal will still be alive. It looks no, like he's holding on to that burst here. Yeah, maybe looking to pop a defensive overdrive at a decisive moment. John biding his time. Excal finds the air dash, and that's gonna do it. The three. Oh, losing nope. it out with. I knew it was gonna come. Out. I knew it was gonna come at some point. Yeah, he knew the whole. He, we knew the whole time. Yeah, you Excal can tell that, knew the whole time. You can tell that Excal is just having fun with himself, right? He is realizing, like, okay, cool. I have a. Uh, you know he. His mindset is the mindset I have when I'm just casually playing with some homies. Except he's actually good, right? <laughs> like, like he, he'll look at his meters like, oh, I have 100 meter. I'll just go Astral. I'm not going to even spend my resource on anything else. And the thing is, he's just so clean and neutral. He's so clean in pressure that he can kind of just do that and get away with it. And not only is it, in a way, a bit disrespectful, right? Because, you know, Astral being an Astral, Cinemag, you're making them watch a movie. But at the same time, um, it's optimal, right? The fact that you just restrain to the Astral, boom, you're done. And uh, we, yeah, we've seen plenty of times in this bracket tonight where rooting killed rounds, killed matches, and swung things in completely different ways. No, yeah, absolutely. Blaze Blue, such a combo heavy game. It's so important that you're at least able to finish them, even if you're not doing the optimal every single time. Um, the consistency problems that Don was having on the Hazama just cost him those two games and then wasn't able to put it together on the Terami, unfortunately. So we will be seeing Excal and Fire for our grand finals tonight at Boston Blue Beat. And did you summon the Valkenheim? There's no way, right? Or is Excal changing his no, body? He's definitely listening. Excal's painting his buttons, I think. He's definitely listening. Because <laughs> I don't think Excal has a Val. No, I don't think so either. Surprise me. <laughs> okay, yeah, probably changing his buttons. That looks a little bit more familiar. We're going to have Carl and Kagura facing off for our grand finals. Make some freaking noise in the chat for Blaze Blue Central Fiction at Boston Blue Be Online. Bye. Grand Finals between Fire and Excal. Excal coming in from the loser side, looking to make this reset happen. And of course, Fire is going to be this defender on the winners of side. These two players have played quite a bit, and Fire is not looking forward to playing against a Carl matchup here in the Grand Special player as good as Excal. But Fire is making it work. Lots of great block, but not able to block that air dash overhead. Unfortunately, and you saw that Ada meter get so low as well, but not quite low enough to kill her. The fire gonna find the kill on Ada and put Excal on the back foot. Excal actually choosing to burst. Excal just backing you know, up, waiting for that time to recharge, and then the moment they see that fire, he's trying to chase after. Literally, he goes for a different approach. 
And uh, working out magnificently for X now. And I think this might be uh, a wrap here. Well, not yet, no, but no it's one looking very close. But not if Fire goes for those DPs. Fire has been known oh, to be a reversal no. for all this entire bracket. So many of these flashes have been successfully hitting and digging in so much reward. And this is going to be a ton of reward. I'm going to be eating my words because the amount of dance Fire is doing right now is absurd. That X Cow, I don't think, is going to be surviving anytime soon. Oh, no. Yeah, comboing 2db and Dizanga is a little bit wonky. Fire, unfortunately, losing the opportunity that he made for himself to get the kill. Volante coming into the back. Wyvern to invo through it. So smart. But the block on the overhead is going to get the round for x -Cal. Once again, the defense is just so strong. Alright, facing x -Cal down through the air. And there's the nails. Popping out from the doll. And that, that big that hitbox is coming out so far. Oh, that 60 could have been a huge conversion to fire. Unfortunately, not able to find it and finding himself on the wrong end of the conversion now. Oh, there's a missed face there. Yeah, fire able to find the punish and put x back into the corner. Going for the B or for the extra plus frames. x popping the overdrive, but you are dead. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We have plenty to make sure this kills. Goodbye. Do exactly that. Fire ending the combo early. Just do the easy thing that works and does enough damage to kill. It's all you need, Carl, with only 10k health to his name, tied for the lowest in the game. What a VFAP! Ooh, what a roll through that, uh, Wyvern there. Yeah, Fire able to put it together so far. Oh man, this has to be a little- <laughs> This has to be a little bit frustrating if you're, uh, playing against Excel. We've been seeing Excel do this a lot, where he just backs up, like, basically just right behind the doll. It's like, okay, you approach me. I'm gonna wait for you to do something, and I'm going to, um, finish the job that it creates. Fire spending the counter assault and also spending the burst, trying to find a hit on x -Cal, but the hit does not come. And you're back in the same situation, but now you have no resources to escape, and you just have to block it out. Hundred meter here, flash kick. Oh. Oh, Fire's no, got the combo. So lucky. Ada is dead as well. By finding the hit, it's not over till it's over. x could die in one or two exchanges. He's waiting for one player to mess up right now. OC lit. But now the time is ticking down. The burst from x so close to locking up the round where the overdrive come back from fire. He pops it at the very last second. He only has precious little time. And the drill from Ada is going to lock it up for x -Cal. That's going to be the first game of Grand Final. Excalibur Blades on the Carl. Two more games to go, and now we have a reset on her hands. Oops, all resets, this I suppose. This might be fire, actually. Fire, um, not going down without a fight whatsoever. Um... I would not be surprised to see this be um, a 7, 8, 9, 10 game Grand Finals. I would not be surprised if we are here for a while. Yeah, I could definitely see that happening. Sorry. But right now, XL is pulling no punches once again, locking into the curl. I'm not messing around anymore. It's crazy. He messed around with with Dawn, but uh, he's a stone he's a stone faced killer when he's playing against Fire. Can't let him know his inner thoughts. The inner machinations of his mind are an enigma. Maybe Q sees the fireballs. Doll's going to be taking through all of that, though. And the pickup. Only a lot. Yeah, Pogger 
Kagura does have a couple options to try and contest Ada. A lot of his C normals will kill her in one hit and force her to deactivate, but unfortunately Ada is still Ada, and Carl is still Carl. And it doesn't matter who you are if you're in the corner against Carl, you're having a bad day. Oh my gosh, two A's, two A's, five A's, five A's, and the doll is just pushing fire to the other side, and there's the flash kick finally coming out. I was like, okay, x -Gal, I see what you're about to do. You're probably going to instant overhead me, huh? And he's like, okay, I'm going to look for the moment that you take flight. I'm going to be flash kicking you out of the air. The pace is from fire. I don't know, that was just so funny to watch. But that is what Carl does. He just puts you into the block string, and he can keep you there for what feels like forever. And this... What a conversion from x -Cal. Almost able to find the kill. Not quite, though. But that is going to be it off the whiff for fire. x -Cal going up around in game two. And once again, this doll proves to be a menace for fire. Always trying to go for these round star wyverns or fireballs. But the problem with that is that, uh... Ada basically just blocks it all. Oh, the back dash from X Cal looking for the C Fap. Fire finding the right time to let it rip, trying to catch the back dash. Not quite able to do it though. But has X Cal trapped in the corner, looking for the escape option, still not able to find it. The swings from Kagura are so strong, but Volante is even stronger. And just like that, X Cal is free. Ooh, okay. Great starter here for, for Fire. Yeah, Being Fire able to keep up the chase for so long. The fuzzy jump on the command grab from x Cal though. It just all feels so futile, like nothing oh, you're doing is ever enough. enough. Oh, that surely is. The bait on easy the burst. Bait. Two games now to zero for x Cal. Fire's gonna have to make something happen. The last thing you want is for a player like x -Cal to get momentum, to get into your head and build the momentum through the reset into the second set. And you would think um, that x -Cal, um being by most accounts a stronger player, would be finding himself on the winner's side and that we'd be one game away from ending the tournament. But x -Cal doesn't really care. A grand finals is a grand finals. And at the end of the day, um, the game count doesn't really matter as much as the mentality of i only have this one opponent that i have to beat um he's the only one standing between x -Cal and the championship is fire um and x -Cal looking despite the late entry to raise that trophy at the end of the night mm -hmm. yeah man always uh you're really just feeding the hard way out of here Okay, but it looks like we're going to be pondering the character select and save select for a little bit here as we maybe gather our notes, see how we handle things. We'll get right into it. Carl Clover. Yeah, absolutely. That, that character select time like you were talking about, Salt, is so precious because you can take that time to gather your thoughts, to think over what's been happening in the past game, what could happen in the immediate future, and just sort of calm yourself down after what often shapes up to be very high pressure interactions the burst right away from x -Cal knows what that starter could have been and the corner positioning again so valuable fire gonna get put in the situation right off the bat and right off the bat fire will be spending that burst as well we won't have it for later in the round dust yet these flash kicks are showing that like hey they're basically telling you that fire doesn't really need the OT has a defensive tool instead. He always has flash picks to grab you out of the air, grab you on the ground, and everything in between. Yeah, but unfortunately, Carl also has very strong defense. And there's the fuzzy overhead set at Kagura, one of the taller crouchers in the game, besides Hager or Hawkman. And those two are very susceptible to instant overheads, but so is Kagura. And that mix up where Excal is doing that dash jump in is a 50 50 if you are Kagura. To the other side we go. It's got one time, but we'll hit him now. Yep, Kagura. Thankfully, Kagura has a 50-50 of his own off of that 6B. And Fire able to leverage it, catches x blocking high, looking for Kanemos, goes for the 3C. 
but you're still fighting Carl Clover, and it's so hard to get started. Fire's been finding himself on the back foot in a lot of these games, and there's that fuzzy overhead once again. It's so hard to block. Reset, possible. Yeah, one. there it is. Unblockable number two, the active flow now for Excal. And Fire, I think, might just let this round go. I, think I don't just mind have this to. There's at no all. coming back from that. Yeah. Or at least maybe there I was, think... but Fire just not uh, looking to bank on that just yet. Yeah, I could have. Um, I could have seen maybe um, a burst out of that situation, but I think Fire more so wants the burst back for a situation like this when it's round three. You don't have another round to give. And these mix-ups from Excal though are so suffocating. Fire finally forced to spend it. Hasn't been able to get anything started for a health bar and a half. Gonna have to make it happen now. And that could be exactly what he needs. Oh my gosh, oh. we are just plowing through that OD bag, completely ignoring it. Yep, if you OD through a fast normal, such as um, a lot of A normals or B normals, if you OD through them, the opponent is actually plus, even though you're invincible, they can freely press. And Excal got his post check there. But still undeterred because he's Carl Clover. And you're back in the corner again. Hello? That was an insane play from Fire catching the Vivace with the 5B. The low is the only thing that that Vivace is vulnerable to. Falling down from the heavens, catching with the drill. And yeah, now I think this combo will be enough. We have enough resources on hand. Oh, but that was a bit of an awkward, uh, awkward ender right there. So now he wants to get as much as I think he would have hoped for. Like fireball, fire though, still so respecting with the moves that he chose. And who, and uh, actually able to block all these really successfully. Oh no. Oh no. Fire not able to finish his plate, and Excal is going to find the reset just like that. A reset just happened as he takes fire. 3-0 and drags him down to his level. It's like, hey, now it's now it's time to feel how it uh, see see how it feels to uh only have one life left. Please select your character. Yep. Never argue with a puppet character, they say. They will drag you down to their level and beat you with unblockables. It's really just Carl though, to be honest. <laughs> because of it course. Is really just yeah, Carl. why not? He's a war criminal. Why did they give him more health in this game too? Um, he's a he's a growing boy. He's getting older. He needs more. Okay. Needs more money for the okay. Game. Of, all <laughs> <laughs> of all of the excuses I've ever seen for giving Carl 10k, that's got to be one of the funnier ones. I must admit. All right, yeah, this is gonna be getting post that reset. reset. Fire versus Scouter Blaze playing out one more set for the night. And Amelia Excal is popping OD for that offensive start. Yeah, Fire blocked the standing overhead, but Excal popped overdrive and was plus anyway. Although not able to leverage very much off of it. Able to win neutral here though. This is the start that Excal is wanting. That is more like it. Nice beat up on the cross up though. Fire not going quietly into the night. And this is all coming in from the other side that time. Not too middle. Oh no. This counter hit from Brio could be the end of the round. Oh, that's gonna do it. A round of applause for Excal Overblades cleaning up that round and kicking off the reset, picking up right where he left off. Yeah, Excal really just tossing uh, fire around at this point. Fire doesn't seem to have the. He's really kind of struggling when it comes to the game plan. Dealing with Excal so far. Really difficult venture. Things are not getting easier after that EA pushing Excal into active flow. Immediately. Yeah, the pressure from fire. Um, he's able to find hits, um, burning the 50 meter to get the extension off of the C-Fap. 
Getting 4k, setting up the BR for the plus frames again. But again, Etzkal's just able to weasel his way out and find a hit of his own. It's just right, like you said, Salt, it feels like... Just like you said, Fire has sort of been fighting on the back foot from the jump. Got his back against the wall again. Conversion with Ada from Excal, oh and that God, is going to be it. That was a uh... right. yeah. That was that was very clean. I won't lie. Yeah, the awareness on the doll position to get the doll normal out and sort of, um, sort of just attach the two parts of the combo together. It's like. What's the analogy I'm looking for? Just sort of just spanning the gap in the combo for x -Cow and able to convert it into the kill for a fourth straight game. And that's important too. Because like, again, the momentum factor for Karo and especially for a player like x -Cow is so strong that the more that Fire loses, the harder it becomes to win and the harder it becomes to get anything started. So it's starting to look a little bit grim. Not out of it yet. Do you think we can see a possible character swap from Fire? Do you think he's going to be seeing? We will not be seeing. We will not be seeing a character swap from Fire. Okay. It's not going to happen. Noel and Tager both do terribly in Takaro. This is Fire's yeah, best yeah, matchup yeah, by far. I will say that. And you've been. He's not. This. It's not like I. I. I say this because it has happened before. Maybe not against Excal, but uh, a similar situation in the matchup. No, yeah, Fire is liable sometimes to pick into a slightly worse matchup just because of the confidence factor or the different character factors. But I don't think we're going to be seeing that because like you've been talking about, these flash picks have just been paying dividends for Fire and he is not going to give that up because that's so valuable against a character like Carl. But the overdrive through the 6 e The punish with the 5A, that's character privilege if I've ever seen it. Ooh! Great opening. Oh, wow. Fire turning the lucky break off the extended CFAP hitbox into a great combo off of the 6A BFAP. And that is going to be a kill. Fire finding a round. Yeah, this is, this is huge for Fire. It's just uh, to, to validate, like, hey, you can take a round, you can take a game, you can take a game, you can take a set. And this bet is certainly what Fire is trying to win. Coming from Winner's side, he's had that safety net. And now it has expended. Yeah, Fire definitely giving it all he's got for the conversion from Excal. Just make it so punishing to make a mistake of any kind. Just like that 5C whiff, not what Fire was looking for in that situation. Possibly won the 6C and got crossed up, but gonna get put back into the corner again, this time without his burst. And I think we are going to be curse. seeing another depleted life bar. A very, a very tough, uh, troubling here. And there's the gears grinding him up. The fish off there. Ix out, looking to take one more round, taking another game. And I mean, I, when it comes to the first three, you know, two games, that is a substantial amount. Yeah, because then you have, like, you have to build the momentum the hard way. You have to swim upstream, so to speak. And being down two games is just so brutal. Because there's so much distance you have to cover. But Fire might get a lucky break. Eight is dead. Choosing the burst, trying to make the most of this opportunity. Running Excal into the corner with the counter hit to see. This is huge damage with the drop. Drop again for fire. And X Cal finding himself on the better side of the corner once more, standing overhead. All right, here's the OD activation. This should be enough. Yes, super at the very I don't end. Think quite enough, Carl. Oh, no. A lot of health. Okay. Fire with a life and a prayer, but the Vivace through the counter assault. And that's. Five straight now for Excalibur Blades, completely unanswered by fire.
has yet to get any substantial momentum going, and it is now or never. One more game, potentially. But uh, we're, we're in the end game right now. It's either this last game or potentially up to three more. We have we don't have a... Or, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, no. no yeah, that is don't, correct. don't have a lot of time X left here tonight. All right, make those adaptations very, very fast because Excal is on such a critical point in this set so far. Yeah, Excal definitely wants this thing over as soon as possible. Fire, on the other hand, gonna have to win three straight games in um, a comeback that, if not miraculous, would be hard to describe. Oh, absolutely. It's, I wouldn't be against it I, happening, I, but it's it's going to be very, very, it's going to be very, very tough. But Fire has proven that he's been able to take rounds before. And we'll be seeing if uh, Ixcal still has that download here against Fire to um, basically just disassemble his play style like we've been seeing so far. Probably to lock him down. The overhead connecting and immediately fuzzy. taking this early combo. That is such a strong way to open the game with the fuzzy overhead right away. Throwing the 5D8 will not be subjected to a knowledge check this late in the set. The mental composure is just there for Excal as it has been the entire tournament and you're dead just like that. It hasn't even been 30 seconds and we're already on tournament points. So already Excal licking his chops, looking at that chicken nuggy money, thinking that about that late so night bad. McDonald's run maybe. Fire firing back. So to speak, with a 2DA. Has a couple standing overhead to the zone. Alright. Mashes from X to have been excellent so far. Interrupting fire at critical points. And there's and that. So have these all Fire into the wall. Let's see what is fire's decision going to be after this situation? I'm going to elect to be staying down back. Question is if Fire's Fire. still looking to risk the fact that they have that flash. What a mash on the Vivace! Yeah, what a mash on Excal right there. Fire completely reversing the situation, gonna steal around with the instant overhead. And we've got ourselves a game, gamers. Fire mercifully has built one more overdrive, could potentially be his last if he's not careful, and he has to be very careful as we found out. Third game, final round. Who is going to take it? Oh That's no! A huge anti air for fire. Next gal, not yeah. uh, uh, also recognizing that as a huge anti air starter. First bit. Fire Maybe might be making it happen when this combo exists. Guessing for game now is X Cal the first time in this set. Fire with 50 meter for the extension could pull something cheeky out. 6A, but no RC. And there's the counter assault. Right when fire spends the meter. This is exactly the situation that Excal wants to be in. Putting fire in the sandwich, making a meal out of Kagura is the goal for the chicken nuggy money. Late air dash, there's the burst from fire, potentially his last. Alright. Making a defense, that is that fireball. I am swinging for the fences with the I-80, and there's the command grab! And Fire's gonna get a game! Finally wow, putting one, one on the board. Now, one game for Fire so far. Only two more to go. And he's free, man. Thanks, Galar Blaze, realizing, like, okay. I gotta, I gotta clean up my act. Something, uh, something, yeah. something set there for for fire now he's uh starting to make this rebound it seems Please select your character. absolutely maybe fire's gotten to the point where he's all right he's gathered some data he knows what xcal's game plan is and he's ready to start implementing these adaptations it's like sort of you build up these little this little list of things that xcal does that you know you can punish if you make the right decisions and you take it into the game at the very last moment and you start to cash out on your mental investment that is a little bit of a little bit of a strategy that you can implement in these long sets is playing for the end game and like you said we are in the end game now fire still with his back against the wall xcal still one game away from the lion's share 
of the chicken nuggy money. Who's going to be getting more chicken league. nuggets at the end of it? It's looking like Excalibur Blades. Just based yeah, off of this really round really start. start. And there's that fuzzy overhead again. Yeah, you can tell that fire. A bit of second hit by that once again. I know I, I I completely understand. I would be also upset if I got hit by that fuzzy overhead again in a situation like this, not where you want to be whatsoever. Two C armor coming through. Oh, that was grime. Block on the fuzzy and Ada's dead. This is kind of the moment that Fire needs, but he has so little health, he has to make an opportunity appear right now. Oh, the fuzzy jump on command the command grab. grab. That in that moment, as uh, a scout just easily, really just roll right back in. OD Ray, that's going roll over to the other side of Fire, already ready to uh, be blocking that. That was such a scary c path with nobody home, but Excal just a little bit late on the punish. And again, Ada a little bit low, but it does not matter. Fire again, getting another overdrive again. It could be his last. He's going to really have to make Whoa. this count, and with a counter hit anterior like that, I'm sure Fire will. Oh my gosh, he's keep Absolutely, going. that counter hit 16 is a huge it is 4.5. <laughs> Fire tried to wyvern the Volante and he was late and he uses the burst to keep the corner. There's that low again off the 50-50, spending the 50 meter for the conversion. Not gonna find the kill, but very close. Last pick coming through. A lot more on offense, which I really like to see, honestly. It's just, it's just basically conditioning the opponents like, okay, I'm going to uh, basically just stop what I'm doing Make some purposeful gaps and then you try to press on the stomach. It's going to be They don't have to worry about getting Absolutely. out of it. The patient defense from X Cal going to be rewarded for what could potentially be the final time on the lowest day. Hey, but Fire finds a C fast. Dude, that's. Uh, even with the killing blow that X Cal found, he couldn't properly confirm it in time. Fire. Can't get complacent. He has to keep his foot on the gas. You can't get comfortable. Again, not able to wire in the Volante. And again, the X Cal gonna put him back in the corner for it. I would not be surprised to see a burst, but maybe Fire's gonna try and block it out. Oh, don't tell him this is gonna be a perfect to end things all. Fire has meter though. Very well could not be worried about that DP. And oh, we're going to be spending that burst the because the fuzzy from X Cal. Trying to close it out for the win early on. So fireball eating through that dog gauge. And X Cal has full meter of full stick of butter to use at his disposal. Astro on deck if he so chooses. Down the low, found the overhead, and there's the Astro oh, no. confirm for the flashy finish. X Cal. With the reset from Lou's side of the bracket, takes the overfire in a close set. 3 1, taking Blaze Blue Center of Fiction online for Boston Blue Beat. Yeah, bringing the curtain down, crushing Fire's hopes of a comeback as brightly as they were burning. Unfortunately, just a little bit too much to overcome, a little bit too little too late still well fought to fire absolutely gave xcal a run for his money put on a performance he should be very very proud of against one of the strongest players in the world at this game don't you forget it now hopefully not only if he starts showing up to some majors to really prove his metal in the local scene but uh no yeah fantastic play from all the players so far um whether you're outside of top eight, whether you're inside of top eight, we all appreciate you for coming in and playing in, uh, playing the game. And if you're also watching the stream, we want to have a special shout out for y'all as well for showing support 
for this wonderful game. Of course, there's also that match arena link, exclamation point match arena in the chat. We bring it out one more time to add a little bit more to that pot for the players that uh, basic that made it this far first and second. You know who is going to go support them if you can. Eleven dollars, eight two cents in the pot. It could get a little bit bigger. And if you don't feel like directly contributing, you of course have some donation codes that you can claim as well. Twenty four remaining, so do as many as you can but other than that i think we're going to be signing out and we'll be raiding omega lid i'm salty boy and of course i'm joined by just the tomato find me on twitter at bbcf underscore jat find salt on twitter at the salt shaker underscore and thank you everybody for spending your monday evening with us have a fantastic night and play cf <laughs>